Hey guys, last episode I had a lot of trouble making the holes in the handles as good as I wanted, and I was having a lot of trouble figuring out why, and I was worried about how much I might have to modify my design. At some point, I started doodling just from scratch in Fusion, and bam, I might have created my best design yet. So what do I do? It feels like I'm so close with my current design. It feels weird to spend months perfecting a design and then come up with something that might be better in a half an hour. I don't want to go back down the mountain again, and I don't want to do a bunch of prototypes, but I don't think I should ignore a good idea either. I had to do a real world test, so I 3D printed it, and it looked pretty good. I decided to make two pairs of scissors. We'll find out which design is better. The spacers and buttons are the same for both. I got water jet blanks for these two, which I'm not sure if this is the best strategy for these parts. I started by milling a pocket into the palette. Then I realized I need two because the part isn't symmetrical. I did this one with air so you can see better. I face one side, then I flip over to the other one, face, and drill some holes. Next, I actually make a pocket for the buttons, and machine them in a similar way. Now, I machine out a large area for the buttons and spacers. I need room for the form tools I'm using. This isn't the most efficient use of this palette. I'm just kind of fitting what I can until I figure out what I want to do more. Now I can finish the buttons. and the spacers. I might as well anodize the parts too. I went with 33 volts for the buttons and spacers. and 65 for the handles. I wanted to try to get a kind of rose gold color, and I thought light blue would go good with it. I wanted to use the blades I hard milled, but they weren't in the best condition. I tried to grind away the tabs and extra material that was left from trying to mill them apart. I also tried to get rid of some of the scale. I decided to add a very steep cutting angle to the edge, like some scissors have, and not go super sharp. I don't want to cut myself again. Which is why I also broke the other edges. Okay, let's put it together. Thanks to Dimitri for suggesting I look up ring shims. Now I'm able to try Teflon and stainless washers in the size I need without having to custom order them. I'll probably still custom order bronze ones eventually. Let's see what Teflon feels like. I decided to ignore the magnets and springs for now. I just want to get a feel of the tolerances. It looks pretty, but for some reason I can't open the scissors. And the button is very stiff. I tried to mess with it and figure out why. Then I just reverted to the Jeremy Clarkson School of Engineering. Alright, now we can see it in valley mode. It feels pretty good. The Teflon does seem slick. It doesn't seem like it's closing all the way though. I'm worried there's extra material in these grooves that I 
can't really get to on the belt grinder. I tried to get at them the best I could with the tools I had, but I'm not sure if it was working very well against the hardened steel. I thought maybe the reason the scissors weren't opening is because the material's too thick and there was interference with the pins. So I tried to carefully bring them to size with the belt grinder, which I won't say I did amazing at. I put them together again and the problems remain the same. I couldn't figure it out until at one point I tried to assemble them in the open scissor position. Now the blades can't close. The blade is hitting this threaded tube. Huh. I don't know how I designed it this way, but you can see it doesn't even work in fusion. In my last scissors, there was a strange click to them. I thought that this was just some burr or tolerance issue, but no, I think it's the same problem. <sighs> this is why I don't have pre-orders. It's not that big a deal though. I just need to round it out in fusion more. But I'm not really set to make more blades right now, and I just want to get this one done. I made a guide to help me get rid of the right amount of material. Okay, maybe I've lost some points in looks, but hopefully it'll work. I think it does help to assemble them in the open position. Alright, they open and close. It feels very smooth. But the cut quality isn't great, which is still more about the bend or lack of bend in the blades than the sharpness. I tried oiling the pins and it helped with the button. Over time it got less stiff. I think this is the best tolerances have been when it comes to how the blades and handles lock together. Some of the last ones were really bad, but despite how nice it flips, it actually still does have a lot of play in valley mode. This is probably because I went a little bit undersized on the grinder and I still need to figure out the issue with the pinholes. Here you can see it's a bit longer than my last pair, which I think I like. It's more handle biased, which I think makes it easier to flip. It weighs 137 grams, which with longer full metal handles, you'd think it'd be a lot heavier than my last design. But nope, it's actually lighter. My last design is 146 grams, that's how much difference the full bevel makes. Well, these bevel scissors didn't come out perfect, but I still think they're pretty nice. In the next episode, I'll try to make some scissors with the other design. I don't know if it'll work, but I think I've already learned from it. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.